Hi, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer, Termel, and this was an article from October the 20th, 2008. I posted in response to an article by Robert Zimmerer on the TOES list. TOES is the other economic summit which would take place at the same time as the G8 where poor people would offer their alternatives to the non-alternatives of the G8. And I gave the first speech on a worldwide let's to a TOES. So Robert Zimmerer wrote and I responded, RZ, after Keynes and Friedman too. It would indeed be fortunate if our new president were to follow any academic ideology as he moves to rebuild the fatally flawed financial system now collapsing in the USA and around the world. To their credit, PM Gordon Brown in England and President Nicolas Sarkozy in France have called for an international meeting to construct a new world financial structure. And of course, these are all lawyers and bankers, but no engineers to engineer this new structure. So they should do what is suggested in the Millennium Declaration Resolution C6 to governments to restructure the global financial architecture with an alternative time-based currency. That gives people the same credit at the bank as a piece of gold. Yes, they didn't notice the solution way back in 2000. So, RZ, once again we find our financial structure crumbling from the use of money, a token of value being created as an interest-bearing debt. This traditional bank practice known as fractional reserve banking requires exponential increase in that debt. Well, yes, I've charted that, shown how a bank account will make your bank balance grow exponentially, yes. So he goes, no PhD thesis has been awarded to an aspiring candidate on this subject. Well, my bankmath.htm, which contains my advanced engineering analysis of the banking system, deserves a PhD because there's only one professor of banking systems engineering on the planet who studied it for 30 years and published the blueprint and the control systems, and that's me. So, yes, I guess the professor deserves a PhD somewhere, eh? Anyway, uh, I've already done that thesis. It's at Bank Math. Just Google for the word Bank Math together. You'll find it. RZ, apparently it has escaped the notice of econometricians that debt whose regular interest payments are made from more debt is the equation of exponential increase. Well, I said it didn't escape the notice of the banking systems engineer. Bank math explains that debt is equal to E to the IT, or for computer science people, EXP bracket IT, where I is the interest, T is time, as an exponential function of interest and time. So I've already got that done. RZ, such a system cannot be sustained and must collapse from time to time as history shows. Well, yeah, death gamble, people get out, knocked out of the game into poverty, it overloads the taxation system and everything. Civilizations crumble. Usury is a civilization destroyer. The great the sin that leads to death in the Bible. So I said I made my first presentation on a worldwide let's to the Toes Conference in Denver, 1997. Eleven years ago. And you would have known about bank math. Except that Trent Schroyer, the guy who runs this toes list, upon which I picked up this article, got the Matt Bank Math Banking Systems Engineering Material banned from toes list years ago. So he'd have known this before he wrote this article if I hadn't been banned. And I'd been banned because I wanted to argue it was important to legalize the hemp tree, the marijuana tree, for its economic benefits and not only for its health benefits. And I was banned for that reason. And nobody heard about marijuana advocacy or abolition of interest advocacy from then on. So, Robert Zimmerer continues, a sustainable money supply must originate in a debt-free supply of legal tender. And no, it doesn't. It can have a negative, the person owes, and a positive, the person who is owed. As long as there's no interest, positives always balance negatives, there can be no problem. Whether it's issued as a debt that's backing up the chip, or a piece of collateral that's backing up the chip. We've explained how they both work fine. It's only feedback on one side that causes the imbalance. So I say trading debts is as useful as trading credits. And I'll explain it again. 
Say we each owe the local butcher a hundred bucks, and I owe you twenty. I could pay you by taking on an extra twenty of debt, and by you dropping twenty in debt. So, say we both had a hundred bucks owed to us by the butcher, and I owe you twenty. Well, I could pay you by claiming twenty less credit, and by you claiming twenty more credit. So whether currency is based on positives, him owing us, the butcher, or on negatives, the, you know, us owing the butcher, is irrelevant to whether you can do a transaction with those credits. So there's nothing wrong with using debt as money. It's the growth of debt on money. That's the problem. The usury, the debt service, not the debt itself. I'll honor the debt for stuff I get, I'm only going to dishonor this debt for the stuff I didn't get. And interest, I get nothing for because money does no work. So when you hear someone say that the problem is that money is created as a debt, remember, they are not focused on the true instability in the equation. D is equal to E to the IP, which is I, the instability. And for some reason, think the problem is in the D. So, RZ, upon which strictly controlled banks may be permitted to continue their practice of fractional reserve banking. Well, listen now. Fractional reserve banking, you've seen my bank plumbing. On one side, you got all three leads going into a reservoir and coming out. On the other one, you got four leads going in, but the cap of the new money and the drain of the, new, of the money being paid off, that is brand new. So there's a difference between a piggy bank model and a casino bank model. And of course, here he's talking about having a limit on the creation out of the tap, which is limited to the number you've saved in the safety deposit section. Now, the number of chips issued should be dependent on the collateral presented at the cage, not on how many old chips we saved. And But that's how the present fractional reserve banking system works. You can't turn on the tap until someone deposits old chips. And that's mainly to perpetuate the belief that people are getting savers' deposits, savers' savings, when they're actually getting new money. So, uh, the creation of chips should be limited to the amount of collateral that can be pledged at the cage. That's how it should work. So he goes on, the creation and use as money of this tower of interest bearing debt paper has finally broken the present financial system. The obvious source of debt-free legal tender is from a nation creating it and spending it directly into circulation. No more national debts. Well, I agree that's one way to do it. But there's another way to do it, and that's like the provincial bonds for the states. But yes, that's the way, and uh, I see nothing wrong with the government issuing their own chips as long as they back it up with work and buy something with it. So, uh, he said, or creating, and I say, or creating and lending it directly into circulation too. Not just government spending it, but people need to have access. Oldster monetary reformers think it can only be spent into circulation and don't realize that it's easier to take down the banks by substituting our lending for theirs. You know, not just the government portion, but everybody's portion. The better way to inject the needed currency into circulation is the one that also conquers the banks. So, Robert Zimmer goes on, the European Union has cobbled together a group of nations using a single currency, each retaining limited sovereignty to create some of it, and a central bank with limited authority to manage it. One can imagine the difficulties in the USA among its states as they grew in number from 13 to 50 had such a system been used. Well, unless it's based on something universal like time, then I don't mind Iowa bond currency and, and Florida bond currency and New York bond currency. Oh, not bonds, whatever, as long as it's backed up for work. I'm not worried about that, no matter how many there are. Unless it's based on something like time. So he goes on. The disgraced wizards of finance now placed in charge of recovering from the disaster they caused will further reveal their incompetence. How long will it take before they're replaced? Out of chaos, will a new order arise? Well, it did in Argentina. You bet, I said. When the Argentine banking system crashed in 2001, they had no choice but to revert to the time standard of money so that they were out of international debt by 2006. Every provincial bond paid out was in exchange for value by a human. And every peso paid out by the federal government in exchange for value by a human. Always backed up by work, and that's perfect money if you can pay taxes with it. Hardly anyone noticed 
how they did that. Well, if you see my videos, you'll know how they did that. I look forward to the day the global banking system crashes and they have to follow the Argentine example on getting out of debt. Yeah. So whatever they did to go from busted to paid off two years early is what we should do now, too. And we know that Nehemiah said, let I equal zero. And Jesus said, let I equal zero. Muhammad said, let I equal zero. Ezekiel, Habakkuk, uh, <laughs> All said, let I equal zero. So I believe that uh, that's the answer. He missed it.